Hello again, I am Blunty. I've had early access to uh, Wild Hearts here for a little while now, and a lot more people are getting early access through the EA uh, like subscription service thingy right now. Uh, uh, some people are limited to 10 hours, some people have unlimited access. It's a bit of a confusing as to how they're doing that. But the point is, uh, a lot, of, lot more people are playing it now, and I'm seeing a lot more people uh, be slightly confused about some stuff I saw some of my fellow reviewers be confused about. Uh, because they either weren't paying attention as the game very briefly tried to describe something to them, or they just um, they don't have very curious minds and haven't been experimenting and trying things out for some reason. <laughs> My mind doesn't work like that. I tend to try things out. So, in today's video, I wanted to go over a few things that you might have missed or you might need to know if you haven't been able to play yet, if you're waiting for the official proper full release day. Um, things that are really handy to know that the game either doesn't bother teaching you about properly or are easy to miss or are just a little bit confusing. Um, stuff that I've seen a lot of people ask about. Stuff that I've seen a lot of people baffled about. Um, and the first thing, I see a lot, a lot, so many people ask, how to hide your helmet? How do you hide your helmet so you can see your hunter's face that you spent all that time creating in the, in the really nice character creator? Well, it's really easy. You go over to your forge, where you get access to changing your equipment. And in here, uh, see down the bottom there? Display headgear. Boop. Boop. Boop, boop. And the really cool thing about this is there is some headwear in the game that has like a hood on it. Let me see if I can find you one. There we go. The fresh fern. I think that one's the one I was thinking about. Um, so yeah, you can display it like that. So you can see your little face shield and the hood is down. Or you can put the hood up. Or you can hide it completely. Three stages. Of, of headgear hiding. I love that. I don't know how many pieces of armor in the game have hoods or uh, alternate modes for their headgear, but I friggin' love this. I don't know if I've seen this in any other game before. Um, if you have, let me know if any other game has done this before with multiple, <laughs> you know, hood modes on your, on your, on your armor. But I find that is uh, awesome. Let me put my uh, proper headgear on before I forget and uh, go into a fight without my proper armor on. Right, so the next thing uh, that a lot of people miss, and the game does try and teach you this, like, really early on, like in the tutorial. Like, you haven't even seen a big monster yet, and the game tries to teach you this. Uh, it's like in the first friggin' eight minutes or something, I think. But a lot of people have sort of Monster Hunter instincts and just sort of murder the uh, critter. Oh, here we go. Here's a, here's a perfect example. Oh, wait. No, no. Hang on a sec. Uh, I need to go somewhere else, because that spine glider over there is going to attack me if I go near it. Uh... All right, here we go. Here's, here's a better example. See these, see these big creatures over here. You can totally murder the absolute Christ out of them if you want to get some meat or whatnot. But pretty much every passive or, or small animal in the game, you can creep up to, and you get an option to slay it instantly, or you can pet it. And that prompt disappeared because he detected me there. It's going to run away in a second. But if you pet it, try this one. If you pet these guys, you get different material drops, and in some cases, it is the only way to get certain materials. So don't just kill everything you see. There we go. What did we drop there? We got some fungal conch, and I believe that is the only way to get that particular little item there. Um, oh, and that little guy there, that little ladybug I just swapped by? Pick up all of those too, those little creatures. Here's another one. You know, you can find little rabbits, little bugs, little birds, things like that. Pick them all up as you run past them. Uh, because, let's go back to main camp here and I'll show you why. Those little guys, you can actually unlock cages to build for them. And you can put these little guys in cages. And what happens when they're in cages is they can occasionally drop items for you. These guys uh, I've only just put in here for the purposes of this particular demonstration. So they haven't had enough time to uh, make any materials for me, but trust me. Walk up to the cage, and instead of switch, which was just, you know, you switch which animal's in the cage, uh, they'll, well, you can collect an item from them. Same thing with these shrines. You can unlock these in the uh, progression tree as well. Put these down, and your little all robot friends go to work, and they drop things like call stones, mirror stones, or, which are all slight pains in the asses to collect sometimes, uh, very precious materials for crafting. You can put a bunch of these down too, and depending on what map you put them on, I think they drop different materials from what I've seen. I've done extensive testing on this, but from what I've seen so far, you put them on different maps, they drop slightly different sets of materials. 
Uh, so yeah, don't sleep on these things either. You'll find them uh, in the Karakuri Unlock Tree. Which is, whoops, this thing here. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I'm not going to find it now. But you, you, if you go looking for it, you'll find it here somewhere. <laughs> this is, dudes, this is such a big tree. Look at this. Look at this. I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. This is all the different things and features you can unlock and upgrade. It is huge. Uh, and that's my next tip, actually, while I'm here. I had this in my notes, too. While I'm here, don't sleep on this. You upgrade this tree with the uh, orbs you collect by... Uh, uh, breaking monster parts and, and completing hunts in a few other different uh, smaller ways. And uh, you can spend those orbs on unlocking uh, this stuff. Some of the stuff you have to meet awakening conditions to do, like his one here I haven't met yet because I haven't had the right Karakuri equipped to trigger that in a particular fight. Uh, you can see the, the awakening condition. I need the uh, helicopter and the little stabby thingy down there. Um, that'll make more sense to you once you play the game. But yeah, I need to find a particular monster with those two equipped for the inspiration to trigger to teach me how to make this repeater crossbow. I haven't actually done that yet. I need to do that. I might do that today, actually. Uh, but say, so, yeah, I want to uh, upgrade my launcher thing here so we can uh, have a little bonus of maybe it doesn't use Karakuri thread when we use it. So we just go, whoop, and we unlocked it. So yeah, don't sleep on this tree. There is some amazingly powerful stuff in here, including sort of things like upgrading your bombs. So they do way more damage over a way wider area, making them way more useful. Uh, you can upgrade, you know, this, make your shield wall more powerful, stuff like that. Yeah, do not ignore this tree. Uh, visit it regularly, spend your orbs. Um, oh, and while we're here, looking glass. This is another thing people ask about all the time. Can you change your character after originally creating it in the character creator? The answer is yes, and it's in this tree. You have to unlock it uh, via the uh, Karakuri menu here. Uh, so you can't do it immediately, but it's not too long before you get to unlock it. Um, so yeah, you can build this little mirror. And when you activate this little mirror, it takes you uh, to the character creator. We just need a quick trip back to town so I can actually show you this in action. Because that's where I've built mine, outside my home in the in the hub town. But you can put it anywhere, just like any dragon character. You can put it at any and every camp if you want. Uh, you can you build it, use it once and destroy it immediately. All right, so here's the little mirror here. And if I go up to it, you can look through and change your appearance, you can change your name. So if we go here, you can completely change your uh, your appearance. This is everything that the character creator originally presented to you. So you can fit it with your body, but I don't believe you can change your, uh, your gender appearance. Like you can't go from the masculine model to the feminine model here, I don't think. I don't remember seeing that anywhere here. So yeah, that's about the only thing you can't change, but everything else that you could do in the original character creator, and I love this character creator, by the way, it's got so many options. Uh, it's all here, so you can change that anytime and uh, you know, change your uh, your voice even and your undergarments. I changed my undergarments at one point because this particular little bandage strap looks better uh, on one of the um, bits of armor that I was using. This, this one here, actually, because I had my bare arms. I had the other underwear on before, and I just had these weird dark sleeves on it didn't look quite as cool so I built the mirror changed my appearance and away we go oh actually while we're in town here I can show you here we go here's, here's some cages I prepared earlier collect materials boop crystal snowflake collect materials boop more crystal snowflakes collect materials fall wasabi uh so that's a that's a special, special spicy cooking ingredient thing I got there so yeah, uh, don't ignore these little cages and catch all the little animals you walk past. Just, you know, as you're running through, spam that collecting button as you're <laughs> strolling past little critters and stuff, because you'd be amazed how handy they come in. Back to the equipment screen. Uh, another thing you don't want to sleep on is this little slot right here. This is your talisman. And as you can see, it's only one slot in the menu. But see right there, I'm going to put a little arrow. You can actually equip five different talismans. So it's not just one talisman slot, five. And these, you can stack these with various things. So if I just put a bunch of, you know, fire boost talismans on here, you can stack those up together. So yeah, pay attention to this. Um, these drop from uh, from uh, fights and stuff. And if you use your hunter's arm, that bit where you jump on the monster and pull out the big glowing weak spot, that increases your chances of getting uh, uh, these talisman drops as well, by the way. So do not sleep on doing that while you're in fights. Um, yeah, and these have a lot of uh, cool things, including weapon-specific skills, like that one there. That's specific to the bow. Uh, but a lot of them are general skills to do with health recovery and how quickly you can re you know, recover. There's another one, a surprise attack that 
Yeah, boost power if you're not noticed by Commando. So you do sneak attacks, you get massive bonus of 10% extra damage there, and that's sweet. Um, so yeah, pay attention to this. Check it frequently, because they unlock fairly often. And uh, yeah, make sure you remember you can equip five at a time. Yet one more thing I see people sleeping on at your campfire, or indeed the uh, half in your home here, in my case. Enhance to su uh, Sukumu. So this is your little robot friend, your little ball mysterious robot friend. Uh, kind of like the cats in Monster Hunter, really. Hunter helpers when you're doing solo stuff. Um, they're really quite powerful because when you're on low health, they'll usually set off a little firework and distract the monster. So they tank for you, basically, while you, <laughs> you know, give you a chance to heal. And it's awesome. Um, once you find your first one, it becomes your little partner. And you can change your name, by the way. So don't forget about that either. I've left mine on, de on the default name right now, so I don't forget what they're called for when I'm making these videos, so I can refer to it properly. But at some point, I'm going to change its name to, I don't know, some pun about balls, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, you can um, find more of these guys throughout the maps. There's 50 on every map. And every time you find an extra one, you get some cogs to spend on upgrading this guy. Uh, so you can uh, upgrade the attack, defense, assist, and threader. Uh, and I would suggest upgrading threader first, because this affects you as a hunter. This can actually give you more thread to hold. This is how you hold more thread. You don't upgrade yourself to get it. You upgrade this guy. And right now, I can hold like 22 thread at a time, I think. Something like that. Um, so the assist form is how quickly... Uh, you know, the, the, the heal boost works and things like that, because again, when you're on low health, you'll either do a distraction, or sometimes you'll pop a healing mist as well. So you can upgrade how effective that is, and how quickly it recharges. And defense and attack, they're pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, keep an eye on this. Keep upgrading the guy, make your own decisions, but I, yeah, I would suggest start out with Threader, uh, and probably defense as well, so he stays in battle and be a little more helpful more often. But yeah, quite a powerful little guy, these guys. I was actually surprised how clutch it came in from time to time uh, when it came to tanking the monster for me when I was about to uh, die from, well, you know, lack of health. <laughs> Alright, there's another thing to do with weapons I want to teach you about too, because while the game does teach you about this a little bit, it doesn't do a super great job of teaching you. So let me just show you what the weapon tree is and how inherited skills work, because it is super cool and can be super powerful if you really think about what you're doing when it comes to upgrading your weapons through the tree, especially as you get deeper into the game. All right, so here's a little example about how the uh, weapon crafting system works. So I need a weapon with fire element on it because I'm facing a quite a tough ice beastie at the moment. Uh, so what have I got available to me? I've got this guy down here, but there's two paths there. Here's your base weapon. So I can go over to the right-hand side tree at the edgestone claw there. It's got no skills on it. So I can go straight for this, and we get Speed Swallow as an inherited skill. Or, I could go down to this, we pick up all Boost and uh, Utilization. Which if we have a look here, and see what the skills are supposed to do. And I can go down to this one. Oh look, there's Fire Wilt there. Fire Wilt occasionally reduces your adversary's fire resistance for a while when making a fire based attack. That's a pretty good idea to use against an already fire weak monster. So if we go down to these and then go back up to here, we can have a fire elemental weapon with a fire elemental uh, boosting inherited skill. So instead of just going straight for that, we'll go through the two other trees and then return to that and we'll get a better, more effective weapon. That is the basics of how all this works. As you can see, if we scroll around here, the trees are enormous and interconnected, and there's so, so, so many weapons in different skills that I haven't even unlocked yet as I'm recording this little bit here. Um, but yeah, you can sort of weave your way around through the trees and sort of connect and collect the various skills you want along the way. Each weapon only has a certain amount of skill uh, slots in it. So there's three on that one. If we go down to, say, here, there's four slots on that one. You can see the four empty bars and inherited skill there. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of min-maxing you can do in the way you choose to go through the various skill trees and stack up the various boosting skills that you want to be using. So let's go ahead and enhance that. Now we can go down here and we go, okay, well, we've got two spare, well, sorry, three spare slots on the other weapon. So we'll have claw boost for you. We'll have that as well. We've got a spare slot, but we don't have anything to slot in there yet. Go ahead and enhance there. 
And now we can go back up here and we go, yep, I want that fire wilt. I've only got one extra slot, so we can only pick one of these. So, what do we want? Do we want Claw Boost Fury, which boosts the power of Claw Boost attacks? Or do we want Reutilization, recovers a small amount of Karakuri Thread when Conscient Karakuri is dismantled. So, whenever I must destroy one of my things, I get a little bit of thread back. Hmm. I think I'm going to go straight up for damage. I'm not really starving for Karakuri these days. I've got a fairly good supply. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go for that one. Doop -doop. Click. So we've got our three skills there. Speed Swallow, Fire Wilt, Claw Boost. So Speed Swallow. Uh, we might as well cover that while we're here. Reduces the speed drop experience while drinking your healing. So you move slightly faster while you're sort of slurping down your heal, basically. That's uh, never a bad thing to have if you've got a spare slot. All right, so we can go ahead and enhance. And now we have our Fire Weapon with Fire Wilt on it. It's only 2%. This is early game stuff, as you can see. Very high on the tree, but, you know, it all counts. Um, so the next thing I want to do is maybe move across to this one here, but I need to find some more lava back to get another little drop there. As you can see, I've got the red zero mudstone thing. So yeah, I'm going to go, go and grind away on him, get the extra material, and then do the same thing from here to here, and carry those skills with me so I get a boosted attack from 66 to 90, and fire boosted from 48 to 72. So yeah, that's, that's your weapon trees. That's how they break down. There's going to be a lot of different guides and stuff like that, I imagine, telling you the uh, min-max way to go through all of this. But for early game, it's not going to matter too much. Just pick what you like the, like the feel of. You can roll back your weapons, by the way. You can go back uh, further back into the tree. You get your materials back. So if I wanted to roll back to this one, we can go... Just click on it, discard enhancements, use materials will be returned. It does cost a little bit of gold to roll back, but you do get your materials back. But yeah, I kind of like this system. It seems super intimidating when you first look at this enormous web of stuff. But as you start using it, 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 it makes more sense. Uh, so hopefully this has made sense to you as well. Okay, one last thing I want to teach you. This is kind of a little tool trick to do with your uh, Katakuri. And it's to do with the helicopter one, which I love. A lot of people don't seem to realize you can use this in midair. So if you're falling or indeed jumping off something, you can quickly spam out your helicopter to save yourself or, you know, get some mobility going. And you can launch them in midair. So you can change them together and you get a little height boost as you come off one and onto the other. Uh, so not really useful for going up the stairs there, obviously. But if you're trying to travel a long distance from a very great height, uh, it can come in quite clutch to do that. you got to be mindful about using it, because it does use up a fair amount of your thread when you're doing that, of course. So uh, let's just go and suck up some more juice. Uh, here we go. Here's a better spot to teach you. There we go. So we go all the way across here. So when you start to fade, you go, yep, you know, I'm, I'm not where I need to be. Yep, I'm not where I want to be. So we just go, whoops, boost again. And whoops, boost again. So, yeah, if you're heading into a fight, I'm not sure I would do that particular technique. If you're just exploring the map and trying to get somewhere, or you know you can recharge your thread at the other end, that's a, that's a pretty fun way to cover some distance pretty quickly. Uh, and it's a little more flexible than just sort of setting up one of your zip lines, because, of course, the zip line is just one point to one point, whereas the helicopters, you can change your mind and go in a different direction. <laughs> anyway, hopefully these tips have been extremely interesting and or useful to you. Um, again, these are the kind of things I find that people are missing, because I keep seeing people asking about various aspects of some of this stuff. Uh, and some of the stuff, again, the game doesn't really explain properly or deeply enough, or explains so briefly, a lot of people seem to miss it. Like the, the petting of the animals for different materials, because, yeah, one of, literally one of the first things the game does is try and teach you about that, but most people just kill that poor deer in the beginning, apparently. As I found out while I'm talking to my fellow reviewers. Uh, have a curious mind, people. Try things. Pay attention. The game tries to teach you stuff. Let it. <laughs> Thanks to the patrons scrolling above there. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.